hey fans of Biblical Genetics, this is Dr. C. I'm coming at you again from the Nantahala River in Western North Carolina, one of my favorite locations. Now I chose this location because the, the river here gets very narrow and gets very fast and very chaotic. This is called a bottleneck. And we talk about bottlenecks in genetics all the time. In fact, one of the most important bottlenecks in, in science is called the African bottleneck. This is the idea, I don't believe this, but the thought that the entire human race got down to maybe 10,000-ish people sometime maybe 200,000 years ago-ish in Africa. And during that bottleneck, we evolved from Homo erectus into Homo sapiens. That's very interesting. Now, the reason this bottleneck exists in evolutionary theory, is one of the reasons, is because they have to explain away the fact that there's not much genetic diversity in humans. In fact, we have a lot less genetic diversity than even chimpanzees do. So how did this happen? Well, in a bottleneck, when you only have a few people, you lose a lot of genetic diversity. And so if this lasts long enough, maybe 10,000 years or more, I'm not sure what the number is. I'm not sure I ever have even read that number. I don't know if anyone knows this number, but restrict the population to about 10,000-ish people for a very long period of time, you're gonna lose a lot of genetic diversity. Also, there's only one Y chromosome in the world. They call that person Y chromosome Adam. Now, as we mentioned earlier, that should be Y chromosome Noah, but we'll give them some biblical ignorance. There's also one mitochondrial lineage in the world. They call her mitochondrial Eve. Okay, I can handle that, mitochondrial Eve. Now, the reason that they have a bottleneck is because when the population is small, most diversity is lost. And if most diversity is lost, that means that most Y chromosome lineages are lost, most mitochondrial lineages are lost. And over time, eventually, mathematically, it's almost bound to happen that only one will survive. And once that happens, we have a Y chromosome atom or a mitochondrial Eve. Now that's interesting because I don't think any evolutionist predicted this before they actually ran the numbers. But now that we have the numbers, they're stuck with this bottleneck idea when really it's built right into the Bible. The Bible claims we started with one man and one woman in a small population. Well, there you go, that, all the numbers from there work out. But I want to specifically talk about a massive problem in bottlenecks. Usually when a population is reduced to a very small size, they go extinct. They at least pick up a lot of mutations. And we've seen that there's people groups today who don't have much genetic diversity and they have problems. It's true also in the animal world. I mean, think of um, cheetahs. There's, I don't know the exact number, but I'm gonna guess there's about 10,000 cheetahs in the world today. That's not enough. There's a lot of reproductive incompatibilities we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of birth defects in cheetah uh, cubs. We're seeing a litter size decreasing. Cheetahs are probably going to go extinct and wildlife ecologists are really worried about this. But their population size is on the same order as the so-called population size where Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens. Now, hold on a second. How is this possible? How did we become the superior Homo sapiens? And we are definitely superior compared to the evolutionary idea of Homo erectus. Our brains are bigger, we're smarter, we have flown to the moon. Now, I don't think Homo erectus was less superior to us. I think they're human beings. We'll save that for another episode. But in the evolutionary model, they're not as advanced as modern humans. But this bottleneck would have driven us, driven us extinct. The mutation load, the, the um, inbreeding, the, the fixation of new mutations would be terrible. Let's talk about another term then, fixation. <clears throat> what does that mean? It doesn't mean to repair. It means to get stuck, fixed in place. Now imagine that, um, <clears throat> Let's just talk about this mathematically. When you look at humans and chimpanzees, there's over 30 million single letter differences between our two genomes. This is a place where 100% of humans carry an A and 100% of chimpanzees carry a G. They're fixed differences. Now interestingly, there are zero fixed differences between any major world population. That's a really good indication that our population is not very, very old. We have not been separated for a long time. Zero fixed differences amongst people, but about 30 million fixed differences between humans and chimpanzees. 
but they only have, even in the evolutionary model, about six million years. Wait a minute, six million years? You know, even chimpanzees in the wild, their average generation time is pushing 30 years. Humans, modern humans, our average generation time is about 30 years. Yeah, people can have children at 15, but that's not normal. The average is about 30. So given about a 30 year generation time, six million years, that's only 200,000 generations. Ooh, that's not a long time. Let's think of a scenario where we can have a fixed difference up here. And I'm gonna do a ridiculous scenario. You see, uh, men, we don't usually have a problem thinking that we're very good looking, right? That's a, a typical man thing. Oh, I'm a stud, I'm, I'm handsome, all the girls love me. So imagine that I am Adonis. That's very hard for you to imagine. It's probably not that hard for me to imagine, but I am Adonis. All the girls love me. And because of that, I happen to have lots of children. How long do you think it would take the Adonis gene to spread throughout all people across the planet? Well, we can do that mathematically. We can look at a person and say, okay, this is a selective advantage for this particular gene. It helps them have X percent more children. And with this selective advantage, it would increase in number in the population at this rate and it would take so long to get across all people. Interesting, huh? Yeah, we can do that. Does it work? No. There's not enough time in the history of the world, even given millions of years, for enough mutations to accumulate in a human-like population in only 200,000 generations. So how do we get all the fixed differences between humans and chimpanzees? It's not gonna happen. The mathematics is not in favor of this. A very interesting paper was published um, by a good friend of mine, Dr. John Sanford. It's called the waiting time problem. Now, Dr. Sanford and colleagues have developed a massive computer model, a very, very sophisticated evolutionary computer model where they can plug in whatever parameters they like, whatever population size, whatever mutation rate, whatever selection uh, criteria they like, and they can say, this is what happens over time in the population. <clears throat> okay, what happens in a human-like population to a new trait? Well, let's say that a, a new trait appears, like the Adonis gene, it has a very strong selective advantage. It takes an extremely long time for that new gene to spread throughout the population. But see, most mutations aren't like that. Most traits are very weak. There's no, no gene that says, I'm gonna be very strong, or I'm gonna be very smart, or I'm gonna be very tall, or even a, a single gene that affects your hair color, your eye color. These things are complicated. So when you take an individual and you throw a gene into an individual who has all these other genes that are all climbing for selective attention, it's very hard for one gene to take over. But it's, it's worse than that though, because most new mutations are lost over time. Something like 99.99 and more percent of mutations that appear are just randomly lost because most people don't have a million children. Most people have a couple of children and maybe a few grandchildren, and they're all competing in the population, most genes disappear. So we're not talking about the rise of the Adonis gene once. It has to arise multiple times in history to get a chance of actually spreading out. And genes that are not as selectively advantageous as that have a really hard time. And what Dr. Sanford and colleagues have discovered is that if you take a human-like population and you require three, four, or five mutations to occur, you'll be waiting for more than six million years. You need six, seven, or eight mutations to occur, you'll be waiting for tens or hundreds of millions of years. There is not enough time, even in evolutionary history, to drive evolution forward. So how come humans and chimpanzees have 30 million fixed differences. What an interesting question. You can check the show notes for more information. Uh, please, please visit us there on biblicalgenetics.com. You can uh, find me on creation.com if you want to learn more about me and my bio. We do appreciate your support. So give us a thumbs up. We'd love that. Give us a share. Fantastic. You can follow us on, um, on YouTube or you can follow us on any one of your um, 
your podcasting platforms, iTunes or Stitcher or something like that. We love you fans. I can't do this without you. Thanks for listening. Have a great time. I'm going to come back later with something else very interesting. I've already got it here. I just got to turn my camera back on. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.